week we had our life cycle analysis workshop. It was phenomenal. We had uh, seven people. Um, we, uh, you know, spent the whole day Friday. Um, we started with a workshop on uh, the annual. Um, I'm not going to show you in a minute all these charts unless somebody come up here with other questions, but you can create for each year um, a weather report for your whole year, a, a chart that happens on your birthday. And of course, then three months before um, the, the annual um, rave return, and Rob called it, or solar return. And that reading is really useful for your deconditioning process because it shows you the stuff that's gonna be in your face all year, that's going to try to pressure your not self, your open centers, your bridging gates, if you're a split definition, et cetera, et cetera. So you can really look, and this analysis is very complicated because you wanna look at everything that you have going in that chart. If it's defining, bringing a pressure of defining a channel for you or a center, it's, it's you know, and there are keynotes, inner planets would bring you people, legit people with those gates. Um, the nodes bring you, tells you what direction is going to happen throughout the year, like where are you going to go and how it's going to look around you. And then outer planets bring you what we call development, which is um, what you are meant to not exactly learn, but see. So other planets are really fantastic because, you know, when, when, when you have a gate in your annual return in your moon, that gate is going to bring you somebody, a person that has that gate in their chart and they're going to drive you. But that is kind of rock called it dirty because that influence of whatever gate is in the moon, it's bringing, it's bringing your person and that person has all the other things that they have in their chart. So it's never that clean energy, but when it's Jupiter, or Saturn, or Pluto, or Uranus, all of those outer planets, and they're just sitting in a gate for you the whole year, it's a clean message of that one gate in that one line, and it goes down right in that color, in that tone, in that base, that is giving you an a, a, a development. It's not called an education, it's called a development. And what the way Rai explained it is like, if you're correct, and you're walking down the road that your notes for the year, Tell you. And by, by the way, when you look at your nodes for your annual solar return, you want to look at the gate they're in and the line they're in, because it's different if you have them in a first line or you have them in a third line or you have them in a sixth line, right? The, the, the experience you have walking down the road is going to be conditioned by the line that you have the gate in. So for example, if it's a fourth line, that road is going to be full of a uh, couple of things, right? So a network of friends, and people externalizing, right? All of those things that are part of the four profile. So you gotta understand kind of like the lines in the profile. All right, in the second half of the day, is we, the day we talked about your bigger life cycles, your Saturn return, your Uranus opposition, your um, uh, Chiron. And a lot of you that are newer to human design were telling me this week, you don't, you didn't even know you could start, you know, you can create those charts and look at those charts for your life purpose. So we looked deeply into how you do that. And then we practice with our own charts. It was an incredible workshop. Um, and then one of the people who were on the workshop asked me something that I, it was really a fantastic question. I didn't even know wasn't clear. So this was the question um, and it was Kasha. Uh, and she asked, what is the difference and how do you approach the daily trend looking at whatever is in the transit every day and then looking at the solar return like once a year or those longer life cycles? And that was such a great question. So let me start by actually showing you how you can look at your daily transits. So the first thing I'm going to show you is um, I'm going to go to Maya Mechanics and I'm going to make sure that I'm not, not sure if um, I'm going to go to the home screen. And you can see um, up here, you can open your person, the just now option. You can open your personal chart, but you can also open transit chart. So let's do transit chart first. So the transit chart just shows you what is in the personality, meaning just the um, what's now currently right now in the sun. It's like just the black side, right? Just what's in the sun. Now, when you look at that, you can immediately see something like, oh, there is this whole channel of initiation. And we know that it's been sitting in, um, you know, the 51 is uh, 
let, let me show you. So this is why I really love this Maya mechanic because it shows you exactly where everything is, right? So gate 51 is obviously in uh, the North Node, but look at that. You're seeing it, it's both in Mercury and Venus. And by the way, you guys, I'm not sure I remember the date and maybe one of you knows that date, one of the astrologers or astronomers here. I heard that all of the inner planet, and not just the inner planets, uh, that Venus and Mars and Jupiter and Saturn um, are all aligning. And this is an alignment that has, I think is like once every 1500 years or something like that. I don't know if that's true, but I've heard it said by one of the astrologers I follow on YouTube that if you guys are watching the skies every night. And as I have, I have the uh, sky view app that, that can show you the actual planets around. Um, it's a really beautiful app. They're aligning. They are all coming up on the same or, or very close line on the horizon um, every evening, at least from where I'm sitting in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm hearing that they're all aligning in a way that they haven't in a very long time there. This year is crazy. So anyways, we have the 51 for the longest time in our North Node, and now it's also in Mercury, where I think it, I think it was also there for, it was also in other play. Oh, it was in the Sun and the Earth during the eclipse, and now it's in Mercury in line three and in Venus in line three, which tells us that Mercury and Venus are pretty much aligned if they're in the same gate in the same line. So you can start seeing these things, and then the 25, we all know, has moved into Neptune and is going to be sitting there for a long time and look at what the, such a beautiful line it's in the life of line of selflessness uh which we if you want to go check my um uh transit report on gate 25 on my youtube channel i've talked a lot about that line that the basis for that kind of action that has no motivation um which is all about the, the 25 is about being in the flow is about innocence it's just just being not doing sometimes you know and the doing gets done by being um, the potential for centering through attunement to challenges so now let's take this just this one line and talk about the difference so what happens when it's in the daily transit versus your annual transit transit versus your maybe it's in your current so here is the thing if you have your birthday now or your design birthday, like if your birthday is in about three months, right? Um, and today, uh, Neptune is sitting in the gate 25, right? That would, it, let's say today is your design birthday. And I really recommend everybody go and check what their design birthday is. I celebrate my design birthday every year now. And it's so fun because it's birthday without all the baggage of people disappointing you <laughs> and all of that stuff, right? So Let's say the 25 is in line one in your design birthday. That means that when you're going to generate your annual return chart, it's going to be in that chart. Um, hang on, let me, so in a minute, I'll show you how you generate that chart. So you can generate a, a birthday chart, an annual chart. What is the difference? Well, every day there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff in the transit. And you know, a lot of the time when people show their entire asses as I've been getting a lot of this way, by the way, not you guys, you guys are fantastic. Um, but definitely <laughs> Facebook and I are quarreling. Anyways, when there is this, you know, what is going on? Why is everybody behaving this, that or the other? Especially, so a couple of things, right? If everybody's fighting, go see what is defined by Mars, right? Because that's going to tell you. So let's just, you know, these are kind of the things that we can play with, right? So you can you can kind of look at, okay, what is going on today? But that's going to be most of the time ephemeral, okay? It's not an imprint, meaning, okay, right now this is what's going on, right? So let's, for example, look at Mars uh, today. Where is Mars? Is this up? Oh, sorry, I went. Uh, where's Mars? Here it is. Um, so right now, Mars is in the gate of openness, in the fifth line of the reckoning, in the Jesus, that's why we've been fighting. Look at this in the in the detriment, a tendency to create embarrassing situations. Oh, no. uh, and though invariably successful, the often resulting reputation for crudity and impudence. I think I've been doing this all week. People are yeah. <laughs> 
to the possibility that individual behavior and social interaction will generate negative projections from others. Girl, boy, that has been happening to me all week. Not everywhere I went, but a lot of places. So, wow, just for example, right? So what is in Mars is going to be so important. Then you want to also see, okay, is this creating a, uh, you know, that Mars, and uh, where was it? It was in the 22. So for me, I have the 22. I might be less influenced. But for example, if it was in the 12, it would bring the Phoenician to my 22 that I have, and, and that's going to act a little differently, right? So you want to look at what's going on. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I'm so confused today. 64 is the gate of confusion. All right, so I'm having this line one of the 64 sitting there creating some ha havoc. The 23, right? The 23 right now is in Jupiter in line three and in Uranus uh, in line four, right? So we have a lot of individuality, uh, articulation of individuality. And, you know, again, you can go look at that. Uh, I think I've done a transit report on that. And if not, I'm going to do one because it's a great day. And look at the lines, right? And kind of understand. So, okay, that's what happens when you're doing your um, your daily transit. You just look and you know that it's, you know, some of these guys are going to sit there for a while, but mostly it's going to be like, okay, it's it's there and then it's gone. All right. Now, Let's look at solar return, right? Let me, I had a, a lot of open tabs here that, that nobody wants to see. So again, back to my uh, solar return should. All right, there it is. So this is my solar return. Now, when you look at the solar return, this is an imprint. The uh, You can see that the sun and the earth are the same place that they are in my birthday, right? So it's it's basically the chart of the moment each year when your sun and your earth go to exactly where they were when you were born and three months before that, right? And then, but what's different is everything else that you have done here. Not everything is going to be in a different date, but it's very important to kind of look at a couple of things. First of all, as I told you before, the moon and And, you know, Mercury and Venus and Mars are going to bring you people. So, for example, if I look at my moon, uh, it's literally people. The left side, the red side, has the gate four. My daughter has that. So I kind of know that my daughter this year will be driving my process and that it's going to start on my design birthday, uh, not on my birthday birthday. And then the 57 in line six, that's my son. So obviously my two children are going to drive me this year and that's, and obvious now it doesn't mean that it's only only going to be these two people it's going to be a lot of fours and a lot of 57s um but yeah going down the line right the 43s are going to be coming I, I might be communicating with a lot of 43s because it's in mercury uh and 61s and so on and so forth that 38 in line two is a definition my husband has. Like, this is going to literally bring you people now when i go down like look at this so 27 my uh, uh, Jupiter, right? That's Jupiter is in 27, the line of nourishment. Now this is important. Why? Because in my natal chart, I have the 50, but I don't have 27 and I don't have sacral. So I know that this year I am going to get pressure on my sacral from Jupiter, just sitting there in the 27 in line six, in the line of, uh, what was it? Nourishment, uh, weariness, where it's going to be a you know, this, the power and strength to be realistic in my capacity to care and nurture. I'm going to learn about being realistic um, and having a realistic approach to nurturing uh, whose appropriateness is guided by feeling and instinct, right? So that's not mine. And I don't have sacral this year. That's not how to approach it. But when I look forward to the year, I'm like, it's going to be an ongoing pressure around this energy of caring. It's going to bring definition to my sacral. Now, another thing about that that's kind of crazy that I want to share is that when you have that something bringing definition to a center that you don't have during an annual cycle, you're going to act like you have it. So, for example, I will think I know when enough is enough with caring, but I will not know when enough is enough. So I'm more likely to stop something that I should be continuing to do um, because I will act 
and feel confident that I know when enough is enough. All right, so that's when you do the annual one. Now, when you look at your um, longer life cycle, so for example, I'm gonna now go into uh, my Chiron return now. By the way, folks, I'm in the midst of this Chiron return. So this is now happening. Now pay attention at the beauty. When you have a Chiron return, right? It's not on my birthday, it's April 25. And then it started already started January 28 for the red side. Now look at what happens. Different sun, different earth, different cross. Now it just so happened that I have that uh, five one in all my life cycles, but it could easily have been a three five or a two four. So now when we look at those bigger life cycles, you really wanna focus on the cross because it's giving you a, a hint and a direction to your the way your life's purpose, your original cross um, is going to be lived out. It's going to be supported by the cross you have during a cycle. Again, if you're self, if you're not self, all of this will just bring dilemmas, problems, all sorts of things. But, you know, if you look at my um, uh, Neptune, I have the 25 in line one which is now in the transit because April 25th, 25th is my date for, for that. So it's going to also now when it's in, the, when it's here, now it's very important. And now I have a full channel in a way that's going to uh, influence um, my, at least, uh, you know, until I have my next big life cycle. But also I will say this, uh, just so you know that cycles uh, operate, um, in uh, three and a half years before you have the cycle and three and a half years after you have the cycle, you can feel the pool of, of that cycle. So it's a, it creates a seven year cycle, right? And I see that some uh, people are joining now on the Zoom and people, if you're still watching this on uh, Unblock with Human Design and I know it might be early and you, you feel free to jump on the Zoom, especially if you have a uh, question, Erica, welcome. I'm not meaning to put you on the spot, but if you wanted to share your chart and have a question, you can put it in the chat in the Zoom uh, because I'm very happy to have you on board. All right, so, you know, these these are the different, um, these are the different variations of the transits. And, you know, that question of like, okay, how do I approach looking at the transits daily versus annually versus uh when I do a life cycle return, daily weather is daily weather. It's like, what's going on today? It's right now. You know, I was telling people in the workshop, literally when I started playing with looking at daily transits, I would go to the coffee shop. Um, you know, this was kind of for COVID <laughs> when we used to work in coffee shops. Uh, and, you know, I had a lot of things, a lot of uh, noise and stuff and, and other people working in my household. So I would go to, to work in coffee shops and write and do whatever. And I would look at the daily transit and I'm a friendly manifester. I like to inform everybody around me of what's going on. And, you know, a lot of the time, especially if I'm, I have the human design chart open on my computer, people get, they get interested in that, right? They come up and ask you questions. I can tell you the number of times somebody sat next to me in a coffee shop, we strike a conversation it's a fantastic conversation. And um, suddenly we I opened your chart because of course, and that person's conscious sun or whatever, their nodes or their mood, like their nodes might be in the sun earth. It might be their birthday. I can't tell you how many times that happened to me. So the transit daily can bring you people, can bring you forces. This is how this works when we are telling you. When you are correct according to your strategy and authority, the right forces would come to you. This is how, you know, uh, you you have the 53, but you don't have the 42. So you have the energy to start long processes, but you don't have the energy to finish long processes. If you are correct, you're gonna make the right decisions. Those are gonna bring you to the right place with the right people. And then it can be just a person sitting next to you in the coffee shop, bringing that energy to finish whatever you want to finish. And then you're going to sit there and finish it. So it's not about figuring this intellectually. It's about aligning with this. All right. We have a, I, it looks like I have a question on the chat. If I can only find the chat. Sorry about that. Hang on. Let me do, um, I'm going to pin. All right. Me. Uh, sorry, Erica. I'm still looking for the chat. Where's the chat? Dang it. Oh, here it is. 
Yay. Okay. So Erica, you have, do you want to uh, hop on uh, and, and you can turn on your sound or your camera to ask a question? I'm happy to uh, do that. Uh, I, I have your chart open, but I'm not sure uh, what, oh, so it's a foundation chart. Uh, and you're an emotional manifesting generator. All right, I'm gonna share it if you're if that's okay with you. Let me know your question. Um, I mean, hang on, I'm, I need to see whether or not this is even showing. So I'm waiting to see on the Facebook. Are you guys seeing this um, on the Facebook? Live? All right, and Erica, if you have any specific question, I'm I'm starting to look at your. Not see me. Uh, see this. All right because I'm not seeing your question. So let me know if you have a specific question you want to share. Hang on, I'm gonna just download this on my desktop and then I can open it. So yeah, Erica, let me know if you have a specific question about your chart or you just want me to do a quick reading of it or or what's, what's that about? Um, what else? Oh, okay, so then yeah, about the life cycle analysis, Okay, yeah, Erica is saying just do a reading. And now, of course, Erica, you know, I'm not going to be able to do a full-blown reading, but so let me know if there's a specific focus, something that's bothering you uh, that you want me to, or, you know, something you don't know or understand that you want me to look at. Uh, otherwise, I'll just, I'll just do a, uh, I'll use this as a way to teach people how to look at a chart business. Can you say a little bit more about um, what kind of business dilemma you have. It's going to just be helpful for something like that when I'm doing on the spot. It's going to be really helpful to interact with what you have going. Um, so before uh, I, I let Erica write her uh, question, and I'll tell you guys that uh, uh, just a couple of quick opportunities. Uh, the life cycle analysis workshop is now available uh, in a reduced price if you want to join us. You can watch all the recordings of the um, the workshop we had last week. Uh, join the Facebook group that's dedicated just, just for the people in the workshop and we're having discussions there. Uh, and I'll do a live Q&A. There's a group forming of people who are now taking it after the effect. And uh, we're gonna hold a live call to look at your charts together and kind of review your work because the workshop, as I told you before, people have brought their own charts and they were analyzing, they were learning how to do those life cycle analysis by doing their own charts. So I'm gonna give people another opportunity to, to, um, to kind of show their work and for me to do a little bit of analysis for them. All right, fantastic. So Erica is saying, I have been looking into the success codex and how it and gene keys can help guide me. Uh, do you see anything I need to be aware of? So I will immediately tell you that I'm, I love the gene key. I've listened to all of them, but I'm not a gene key person. I'm a very traditional human design, what Ra taught person. Not that I think that, I mean, we're all mutating it by learning it and by being in the experiment, but I'm gonna just give human design answers. All right, so let's uh, share the uh, Erica. Um, uh, hang on, let me just, just blow this up. And uh, Erica, maybe tell me on the chat if you're seeing your chart. So I see a manifesting generator chart, right? Let's look, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to show you how I look at charts, but I feel uncomfortable because I'm still not seeing on the Facebook uh, whether or not you can see the chart. Then get, uh, it's just something with the sharing. So give me another, to, Erica, could you tell me if you've been seeing it? All right, let me just do something in the background to try to make sure. Um, you, now I don't know anymore if I'm live. Oh, well, let's see. All right, so I'm going to share the screen. And I might have just stopped the live on Facebook, who knows, but if not, Great. If I stopped it, I'm going to just pause the recording later. So there you go. Now I see the chart. So, all right, here's how I look at a human design chart. First of all, right, you look at centers to just see what the inner authority is. If the solar plexus, the emotional center, if it's defined, you have emotional inner authority. Boom, right there, right? Now, I look at which channel defines the inner authority, and it's the 59.6. So that's the channel of intimacy, of making more people, of reproduction. It's a tribal energy. So that's going to be very important in this chart. 
Now, the next thing I see is that this definition is not flowing together with the other areas of definition. So we actually have a triple split situation, right? So we have one area of definition here. The next one is in between the root and the uh, spleen. And we have two channels. So that's going to be an important, you're going to have this adrenal push on. And, and one of the, these channels is the 2838. It's very individual adrenal push into the spleen for struggle, the channel of struggle. And it's not struggle just to make you miserable. It's struggle to align you with the right individual struggle. Basically, if you get out of bed and you feel that you're in the correct fight, that gives you energy to do your individual mutative contribution in the world. But if you feel like the struggle doesn't give meaning to your existence, you get depressed. All right, thank you, Erica. You're telling me you're seeing it. Great. So your other channel from the root to the spleen is the channel of uh, transformation. Uh, also like a very ambitious energy. It's tribal. So you have two tribal channels and one individual so far, right? Now, when, I'm, when I go up from the spleen to the throat, right? So all of that second definition brings together the root, the spleen, and into the throat. And that's what that is what makes you a manifesting generator because your sacral is defined and your you have a motor def defined to the throat, even if it's indirectly, and the motor is the root. So because of your root to spleen to throat movement, that makes you that's the manifesting part. And because of the sacral, that's the generating part. Right. So then that channel is also individual. So we have so far two parts individual two parts tribal, different tribal energies, but tribal. And then when we go all the way up here in the head, suddenly we have the 6447, which is part of the collective abstract energy, right? So mentally and very cut off, right? So it's gonna be a long way to connect, right? You will need a full channel. You will need the 17 and 62 or the 43 and 23 or the 11 and 56. So it's very cut off up during the head. And it's this energy to try to make sense of past experience that are already over and then share that uh, human, ex the, the meaning of that human experience. Um, again, I can't get too much into it, but like obviously why I am looking at circuitry, I'm, I'm looking at the channels, right? To ch it gives you an immediate kind of sense of the push and the pull in the chart. Because uh, individual definitions are going to be all about, in, you know, like an individual process of empowering yourself and empowering others by your example. But it's not about sharing or supporting others. Um, not that the individual can support or share with others, uh, and we're all a mix of things. But these are areas where you're just in your, and specifically you, we can, you know, you're in your struggle in the now that 57 20 so you're super into it intuitive that's the 57 and it goes in the throat in the now and erica i know you asked about business but we can't really answer any complicated like advanced answer before we explain what the chart is even as quickly as that right okay so you have this full movement of really being in your individual struggle or needing to be to feel that the struggle you're in empowers your process and it's going to go all the way in the throat in the now, uh, very intuitive and, and with the 57 and individual. Fantastic, right? This is going on now. But now, look, it's not connected to that whole emotional wave in the 659 that's a, a tribal wave uh, that's all about huggy, touchy, supporting intimacy. Now, I, I would go more into the line of the 59 and the 6 where you have it, you know, how it looks when it's a different, right? All of that. Now, I didn't even look at your cross yet, right? Uh, which would be somewhere I would need to look for, you know, your question that you asked. But then we do know that it's a triple split. I will tell you this, Erica, with a triple split, um, this really means that you are supposed to live a very public life, meaning you go around public spaces um, because there's no one way for this split to be brought together. It actually also means that there is less uh, emphasis on the bridging gates because so many different gates can bridge this together. 
uh, that you're not conditioned by those gates in the same way that somebody with a simple split where there's a limited number of gates that would put them together. Uh, then we really spend a lot of time with the bridging gates. Here, I would just say quickly, in terms of your process of managing your inner authority, you have to wait for clarity, right? You have this sacral emotional connection. So you will have in the moment your yeses or nos from the sacral, but then you're going to have to wait for clarity. So even if you know somebody asks you and you're like, mm-hmm, or uh-uh, uh, in case you hear it, because you have throat definition. So generators with throat definition may not be even able to hear their sacrals, uh-huh, mm -hmm. but it, it can be a gut feeling that you have in the moment and you're very in the moment because you have that channel of 5720 conscious. So you might be tempted to jump in the moment and this is splenic and spleen is also in the moment. However, you're going to get the full word for whatever it is that you, that you end up um, manifesting and generating as a manifesting generator if you wait because you emotional clarity. Uh, let me know in the chat if any of this resonate, Erica. Now, in terms of um, your sacral, we have to remember the, 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 the strategy, right? It's not your inner authority, but you do have the sacral strategy. You are not supposed to initiate except for in response. You can initiate, you can manifest, everybody can manifest. A manifesting generator can manifest a whole lot of things, but you're not supposed to initiate from your mind or initiate without your, um, your sacral response. Your sacral, everybody's sacral that has the sacral defined, it's a crazy, fantastic magnet. It brings uh, people to you, people and things. Oh, thank you, Erica. You're saying that uh, you do understand and it's, it's useful to you. Great. So you risk losing your superpower with that sacral if you try to go out and make things happen. You're not a manifester, you're a manifesting generator. So you need, you know, as a manifester without a sacral, I can tell you that I sometimes I have sacral envy because when you have a sacral, it draws to you, it's this incredible motor, a motor that, that really draws people and things and opportunities and whatever it is that you need to you. All right, so let your sacral bring things to you and then in response, in the moment, after you waited for clarity, which I know sounds paradoxical, but hey, what to do? Emotionality always means you have to wait for emotional clarity. It's not mental clarity. You don't need to be clear about what you think. You need to be clear about what you feel. All right. And, and, you, and, and it takes time. So at the same time, you have that mind constantly trying to make sense. I would just say, Erica, don't worry if things don't make sense. Not everything has to make sense all the time. Your mind will constantly be uh, trying to make sense, right? And I mean, 64 is the gate of confusion, 47, the gate of oppression. Again, this is in the not self, the way Rod described it, right? Uh, so you should really learn how to, uh, or I recommend, right, to learn to be okay with confusion and to learn to be okay with not making sense. All right, so then you are on the right angle cross of penetration. You have the four, six, uh, and you have 51, 57, which of course, see, this is when I, when I told you guys that the transits bring people, Erica, you know, I have that 51, 57 all year in my nodes. I have in other places. And here you are, right? It's like, I'm sure you're in a lot of people's process this year. So 51 and 57 is sun and earth in gate four, and then 54 and 53 in line six. So, you know, a lot of things to say about that, but quickly, the four six is a profile, right? The four is the networker. Um, you, you know, you kind of, all your opportunities, business-wise, relationship-wise, they have to come from people you already know. So you... Clearly, that's a life process because you, you're not born already in your network. So your whole life, you will be creating networks of friends and people. And those are networks of influence. Four line profile are very influential, but you're not supposed to be influential in, in, in a way like a 5-1 or a 6-2. Those are just different type of, of movements in the, in the space. So the way the 4-6 influence works is consciously you are aware that 
You know, I always tell people who have Thor in their profile, like, you know, that they need to, um, their anthem is the Spice Girls uh, song. You know, if you want to be my lover, got to get with my friends. <laughs> this is totally the anthem of the Thor line. You can't have a lover that wasn't your friend before. Uh, Ra also said, and that's, you know, morally questionable maybe, but he says the four flying cannot leave their lover before they have a new lover lined up. I don't know if that resonates, but let's take that into the business scale, uh, scope. What does that mean to us, right? So, you, you know, you have a capacity to initiate, right? With that 51, it's this place and you have half the channel, right? But it's in your, it's in your conscious son. It's a place of leaping to the void. It's a place and you can bring your friends along. So you can initiate a great deal of things um, in businesses and in communities. I would say in communities of influence, you need to network. If you don't know that about yourself and you've not been networking, go network, do whatever, you know, that means to you. And by the way, guys, I know a lot of people get really like yucked out about networking. Uh, it just means that you're not doing the right networking for you. If you're a fourth line profile and you need to do um, networking and it feels yucky and it feels, uh, it sh uh, I don't want to schmooze, one of two things, either you're not in the right network, right? You need to shift the people around you. Um, or you're not self or, you know, like, for example, I would look at this, this chart, you have an open ego and open G. So maybe you're like, you know, if you have a conditioned G or a conditioned ego, maybe you're trying to prove yourself and you made a decision about going somewhere like a conference because you wanted to prove your worth, then it means you did not enter into it correctly. And therefore you're in the wrong network. Does that make sense? Erica, tell me if it makes any sense for you. All right. Then. And, and that whole energy in the 51 is to initiate and start. And the 57, that is also a part of your channel. So it's actually the heaviest part of your conscious side of your cross. Heaviest meaning it's the most weighted. Okay, Eric, I said, yes, it makes sense. So um, that 57 being a part of your of a channel and pay attention here, 54 as well. So two of your cross gates. are participating in your uh this. that means that they are very very important for the process so let's look at the other side the 54 and the 53 in line six so let's start with the actual with the uh, 53 53 is the energy to begin new processes it is also abstract meaning ding 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 having that 53 in your cross and having that 64 47 channel that's also on the same sub circuit that's the acceptor of abstract makes you more abstract than you normally would be. So you're individual because you have a channel. Uh, by the way, the 51 and the 57 are also individual gates. So you have individual uh, one, two, two individual channels and two individual gates in your cross. So you're very, very individual. All right, and then you have the 54, which is part of your tribal part, right? So you also are tribal. So you're individual, you're tribal, and you're collective, but specifically abstract. So I really need you to go check. I mean, one fantastic place to look at those things is the from the book of letters, Ra's original book on the, um, the circuits. I really recommend that. That is uh, available as PDF in all of the groups everywhere. It's it's not a hard one to find. So you're asking about the abstract. The abstract is half of the collective subcircuit, right? We have individual, tribal, and and when you look at collective, the collective breaks down to the logic versus the abstract. Uh, if you look at the body chart, the logic is uh, it goes to the throat from the spleen so 58 18 48 16 right and then here it's the 60 it, it kind of crosses in the ajna uh and so 17 62 is logical and 63 like so the logic goes from 63 to 4 to 17 to 62 there's the 16 48 18 do you see how you don't have all that right 58 and then uh the 952 is the format for the logic and then it crosses here to the 515 731 okay now the other side of that collective um is um the abstract side that is uh, unlike the logic logic looks at patterns in the present to try to 
project to the future. But in the, hang on, people are trying to join, sorry. Uh, let me see that I managed to uh, admit the people that are trying to, okay, good. So then, yeah, abstract goes through the emotional side. So this is why Erica, your collective sharing, you has to happen after you waited for clarity. Even if you weren't emotionally defined, that would be true, right? Now, the abstract looks at the past to look at uh, human exper experiences. The, the logic looks at, is more about experiments and the abstract is about experience. In the 36, 35, this is where the abstract people jump into a new experience. And then when it's over, they retreat in the 33 and wait to make sense which you have that whole channel of making sense mentally of past experience. So I will tell you, Erica, before you can understand something like your day of work or your, I guess if you're an entrepreneur or whatever, and you did something at work, don't try to make sense of it before the experience is over. The abstract mind needs to, uh, it's kind of like in Spaceballs. <laughs> I like Spaceballs joke. Mel Brooks is Spaceballs when, you know, when they say, is it over? Are we done? You can't understand anything while you're in it. You need to be in it while you're in it. And when it's done, you need to retreat in solitude, look back, contemplate, figure out what this whole experience was about. And then you're ready to come out and share with everybody. And, you know, when I'm looking here at that 53, 54, oh, that helps so much. Fantastic. I'm so glad, Erica, uh, that this, you know, that 53 in your cross which kind of gives way to your abstract side of things in your mental um, channel, you are here to start those new experiences and then, you know, be in them and then think about it when it's over, make sense of it. And the way it comes out in sharing is a story. This is storytelling energy. Uh, you know, a lot, of, I'm very abstract as well because I have 33 in my cross. And it's such an important part of my process. And this is why I always share stories about myself. Oh, I remember when I was in academia and it was so horrible and I didn't know what life was and blah, 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 blah. But, but I can only tell that story and share with you what it means because it's over. All right. So when I look at your business stuff, let me tell you, Erica, the first place I, I see that makes that's going to be your business gift is going to be, oh, and by the way, sorry, sorry, before I do that, because it is in the 54, 32, it matters that you're a six line profile for that. All right, so now I don't know, tell me in the chat what, you know, I can see that your age, but are you on the roof? Uh, it doesn't say, it doesn't have, and it's good that it doesn't have your birth date because nobody wants that on the internet. So just tell me, are you like past your Saturn return, past your Uranus opposition, that, that matters. Because the six line, it's, you know, the first, uh, until you go up on the roof, until you're Saturn, oh, so you're on the roof, good, pass both. All right, so until you're in your Saturn, you're living a third life, uh, third line life, right? And so you bump into people and things and you learn from your mistakes, but you're not as resilient as third lines. And so it gets a little, it, it, it Ra said that anytime he saw a six line on the roof, he congratulated them for surviving their first, 30 years, uh, leave, uh, roughly 30 years until you're seven. Okay, so now you're on the roof. So when you go up on your roof, this is when you turn into a role model. You don't, you're not born a role model, right? As a sixth line, you go through a third line life and you go on the roof and you transform your subjective experience, uh, which is what third lines are all about. Bumping into things, learning what works, what doesn't work and right sharing what works, what doesn't work according to their type. Um, but you're turning that into objective truth where you can be on the, uh, on the, that role model from the roof, looking down aloof and saying, you know, a lot of six lines are, I have a lot of six lines, like places where we have six lines in our chart are places where we can tell the other people with the same gate if what they do is okay or not, right? So I have the 18 in line six, which means that I can tell other people if their corrections are good or their shit, right? Or I can tell the collective if the correction uh, that uh, 18.5 suggests is good or shit, right? Then when you have your Chiron, Erica, you will be pulled back down from the roof. Here is what Russ said about making money on the roof. This is the time to make money. He said that six line on the roof are 
should be making a lot of, or like the most money in their lives on the roof. So where am I looking at? Your channel of transformation, that's 54, uh, 32. This is all about climbing the ladder. It's like, who do I sleep with here to get ahead? I'm not saying you're doing that. It doesn't have to be that stereotypical thing, right? But it's this using informal relationships to figure out how to make progress specifically on the material plane, specifically in things like corporate or family businesses uh, or, you know, whatever, academia, where, wherever you are. And I have no idea what you're doing, but this is the energy to climb. Now you have, the, you have that full thing. You have the 30 where you have the 32. Ooh, okay. So you have the 32 in line two in Pluto and see if you have it anywhere else. No. Okay. So you have it all unconscious. You're not so necessarily aware of it. Like, although you, you've, you've all also had your Uranus opposition. So after the Uranus opposition, we become more aware of our unconscious, what we have in the red, just because we've lived enough time to observe those patterns, even the patterns that were like, why is this happening? I'm not aware. Like, I don't know, but I can see that through experience that it's happening. All right. So you have this I'm up and I would say, okay, this is works so well with your four six, like with being a four six, right? Because knowing how to use informal connections from within your network because you're a fourth line is going to be a hugely important part of your journey to get ahead. So, you know, don't just don't hold back. And then you have the whole channel of intimacy. So you can, you know. I told somebody before here that uh, having that full channel makes you an aura buster and they took it as to be a negative. It's not a negative. You, you have the ability to uh, control the intimacy that you have with people. Like you can really, and as a fourth line, that's fantastic, right? Like you can, you have your network of friends, you can really um, develop intimacy with them. And from that would come the informal, who do I know that knows someone that knows someone that would allow me to get ahead? So yeah, I would definitely look at, at this whole side, but, 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 but remember to wait for clarity about all of that, because if you're going to try to push all of these things without clarity, it's going to be shit. Ah, and Erica is answering, yes, but I'm empathic and my uh, circle is currently very small. How do I grow it? You wait for clarity on that question. You know, nobody, I can't tell you how to grow it uh, because that's not human design, right? I would say follow your strategy and your authority. Go with your sacral yeses. If somebody invites you to lunch and your sacral goes, no, don't do it. If somebody invites you and it says yes, now you have to wait for clarity, right, as well. But like, don't go against your inner yeses or your inner no's. Sleep on things because you are emotional, but follow your inner knowing, your inner strategy and your inner authority. Remember that your sacral would pull to you the right opportunities. Then you have to kind of sleep on it and wait to see if it's the right intimacy for you with that 659. Um, but yeah, just and and go a lot in public. Uh, tell me in the chat, are you somebody that works outside the house? Like you work well in coffee shops or libraries? This chart, everybody needs a lot of alone time, but this chart with a triple split, you're supposed to be mobile. You're supposed to be just going around and you're telling me, you know, your, your uh, circle is currently very small. And I would say, start saying yes to things that, and you have the 29, where do you have the 29 twice? So it's probably one of the other planets where you have the 29. So the 29 is that sacral energy to say yes to things. Oh, you're in your nodes in line four. All right, baby. So in four and six, just like your profile. Um, so you're saying I've worked home at for 15 years. Yeah, I would, I would experiment with, you know, going out in public a lot more with that chart. You're not supposed to be cooped up in the house. Um, you're, you're now you might be, be, be doing a lot of this over zoom. I've been doing a great deal of like networking over zoom in the last few years. So I'm not, again, your strategy and authority would tell you. Um, and you're saying makes sense for why you're so depressed. Uh, just recently going out last few years. Yes. And when you said depressed, you know, guys, when somebody tells me depressed, what center I immediately look at, ding, 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 uh, the root. And the next one is 
head and ajna, right? And in the root specifically, when you have a hanging gate, so because you have the 53 and you don't have the 42, those format gates can be very depressive, but you also have the big depression channel. That 64, 47, when you don't understand why it's confusing and there's, right? The, the gate 47 is literally called the gate of oppression. So know that you don't have to make sense of everything. Know that you absolutely are not supposed to make any decisions with your head. It's all about how you feel, what you feel. And that's going to slowly, bit by bit, together with inputs from your sacral, align you to be in the right room with the right people, getting the right opportunities, right? I hope that makes sense and it helps. All right, I'm going to stop sharing this. Uh, it's already 11.34, so uh, somehow we ended up being like on um, more than time. Uh, now, I see Elise uh, joined us. Elise, let me know if you have uh, questions or you want to share your chart. I would be delighted to look at uh, yours as well. Yeah, other than that, guys, uh, here's the last big thing I want to share with you guys. So if you are manifester women... I started a new, I'm a manifestor woman and I started a new manifestor women group. It's, it's a, it's a unblock with human design group. Uh, so it's called manifestor women unblock collective. And it's a very empowered and empowering space for manifestor women. And, um, the whole point of that space is to allow us to share our gifts without censorship. I just got so freaking tired of groups for manifestor women constantly policing manifestor women, telling them what they can post when and where. I'm like, you got something to share, share it according to your strategy and authority. If it's a paid offer, I don't give a shit. If it's a link, I don't give a shit. Just, I don't like um, those rules. On Wednesday at nine o'clock, let us know what you do in a thread that nobody later looks at. Nobody goes gonna look at the thread that just has links. But if somebody is correct, especially the female manifester. And their strategy and authority tells them, this is the time right now I want to step out and offer this. Uh, they should be able to do that without being policed that way. So we're trying this thing in a, a new group. Uh, at least saying I can share my chart. Uh, came late, but I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, share your chart. I'll take a look. If you have a specific question, that would be great. I'm not going to be doing like a whole reading, but if you have a specific question you want to share, I would love that. All right, so then manifester. If you are a manifester woman, sorry, boys, maybe I'll create another manifester space for all genders. Uh, I do love all my manifestors. I love my everybody, right? Uh, Unblock with Human Design is a welcoming community. Everybody of any walk of life can join Unblock with Human Design. Specifically for women manifestors, I like to create spaces for us because we're just an alien within an alien, right? Like to be a manifester is, is already alien to society, but to be a very yangy, masculine energy in a female form is something that has been conditioned, uh, castrated almost out of existence, but we have so much power. And when we bring ourselves together, it really is such a uh, powerful initiating space. I'm, I'm explaining about this while waiting for Elise to share her chart. So Elise, if you want, go right ahead. Um, so, oh, and more people are joining. Yeah, this is fun. So yeah, manifestors. And uh, also, if you are a woman raising manifestor children of, if you are, I don't care if you're a projector or an, anything else, if you are raising a manifestor child, you are also welcome on the group. Or if you have, you know, you're married or dating a manifestor, uh, that we, we also want you guys under, uh, if you are interested in learning how to deal with manifestor. But yeah, but we try to keep it, uh, we are trying to keep it as a manifestor and a female uh space. Uh, at least I'm not going to be able to run your chart right now. Um, I, I, you're giving me the data. If you can just share it as file, that would be great. Allison, also join us. Allison, let me know if you want to hop on and ask a question. You guys feel free to also open your uh, cameras if that if you want. Um, yeah, other than that, what else do I want to share? Um, oh, yeah, I'm still doing um, um, I'm still doing one-on-one -on -one chart readings. I'm getting very busy and booked. It's so fun, but you guys are invited. So check out my chart reading services. Uh, and I'm getting ready to maybe offer another more discounted 
chart reading service. I know my chart reading services are expensive, or you know, they're not that expensive in comparison, but they're on the expensive side because I give of this deep, deep dive and coaching as well as teaching you about your chart and you end up really just ready to be initiated into the new step of your life. If you've had the block, I'm very good at helping you unblock. Uh, if you need a big change, I'm your girl. So let me know. All right. So now I'm seeing uh, another chart. Hang on. Let me see. Uh, I see the Saturn return for somebody. Allison. Uh, Allison, do you want to hop on and tell us your uh, question? Or, um, sure. And then Hey, hi. And by the way, Allison, can you also share? I'm going to do gallery review. Can you also share your, um, I, I, I have to look at the natal chart because we can't really do. So one of the first thing we, it's like one of the first rules of Fight Club. One of the first rules of cycle analysis is that cycle analysis goes back to your natal chart. Like you, you have to understand how it connects to what is in the birth chart, the regular chart. So if you would just quickly uh, share that yeah, as well. I I just attached it for you. Yay. And then, then I, I think too on the Saturn return one, the first one, if, if you look on the right side, that's the Saturn return. And the left side is the natal. Yeah. But me, I'm very visual and I can't really, okay. it's very hard for me to kind of like parse out. Uh, in yeah. That way. All right. So let me t um, add, okay, hang on. Am I sharing the right image? Let me start by trying to share the natal because they want and yeah and, and and Allison introduce yourself tell us your question rock and roll hi I'm I came I actually asked a question in another Facebook group and you responded um with a video of the Saturn return and I watched it and it was really informative um I'm pretty new to learning about um you know uh human design um but what I thought was really interesting that you were talking about was that like the hanging gates are kind of like what hook you I thought that was like a good way to describe it um and I'm just like when I, I just literally went through my Saturn return and so wow. and I've had a lot of life changes happen in that period it's wild I've had all these health problems um that have just come out of nowhere and mm. they've really had to like yeah they've had to shift how I like see myself how I operate um, and so I'm just like extremely curious about what's going on in my chart. <laughs> all right. But that's so first of all, I'll tell you a couple of things. So just jumping out at me. Whoa, that projector chart with the freak to genius. And it's so interesting because ever since 43 and 23 have been really circling a lot in uh in the transits lately, I'm getting a lot of freaks and geniuses coming to me. So again, I'm I constantly want to. <laughs> Show you guys how the program works. It's not about intellectualizing any of it. You wake up in the morning and here you go. Here's this beautiful genius freak, right? That's that's the channel in case you're, you're thinking I'm just telling you something mean. <laughs> then it's not that, right? Uh, this is the channel of the freak, the genius structuring. This is extremely brilliant uh, potential for a mutative uh, articulation, right? Because it's between the Ajna, which is the... Um, Center for Conceptualization, and the throat, which is where we manifest verbally or in action, right? So that uh, channel is, um, is a channel of a thinker, an individual thinker. Basically, if it's not mutated, if it's not going to change the Maya, the, everything around, you're not even interested in it. <laughs> Does that mm -hmm. resonate? That's yeah. Your yeah, right. And now you don't have any avatar. So this is one channel, right? But you do have hanging gates and you have a lot of hooks, uh, which obviously, you know, if you only have one channel, <laughs> you're going to have a lot of hanging gates. So let's quickly just look at this beautiful, beautiful um, projector chart. You're a three five. So that's going to tell us. Uh, so again, guys, pay attention. How do we look at chart? Very easy here. What What is the inner authority? It's, it's that uh, it's not inner authority, right? It's... Um, a bouncing, like you need to bounce ideas, like right, the, the bouncing board, like you have to talk, talk, talk. And here's the, Alison, uh, a lot of people make mistake that they have this authority. When you find somebody to talk through your ideas with, you don't need them to tell you what they think about what you said, right? It's like, and a lot of people suck at that. Like you, you talk to them and they're like, 
want to jump in and help and they want to be right and they might be projecting on you because you have the 2079 five that you need caring that you need them to care for you so this is with the light five a projection is coming your way just because you woke up in the morning and got out in the world it's like oh let me project onto you and what do they project on you that 27 28 either that you're struggling or that you're treacherous and you're gonna leave them that's the 28 in line five i'm gonna talk about your cross in a minute right but the 28 in line five is, I have that one, not in my, not in my cross. But by the way, Allison, it's in my freaking cross for my, uh, um, my Chiron. That I'm ah. in the this is why the program brings. <laughs> okay. So then the 27, uh, 28, right. On this design side of the cross, 28 is part of the channel of individual struggle. I just talked a lot about, right. So it's about this, like being in the correct struggle that gives you me not about not struggling you actually will be very depressed if you feel you're not in a fight it's like join the good fight yeah you want to be in the good fight um, <laughs> i'm a social worker <laughs> it's, it's the <laughs> conscious son is about caring uh -huh. okay I, yeah yeah wild i know <laughs> i'm getting a download which often i get in conjunction with like the chart uh, you need to know when enough is enough. I, I'm worried about you burning out as a social worker projector. Yeah. Okay. You're going to be so caring that you might be carried away, not knowing when enough is enough. And you don't have any motors, nothing, not a zilch. You are yeah. not working like a crazy. And I know social workers work very, very hard and are undercompensated, etc. So just watch out for that. Um, but yeah, it's so funny. So that, you know, what? I would love to hear about that 27.5 from you because I'm about to be influenced by this in my cross for my Chiron. And, and that line, uh, you know what, let's read, do you mind if we, let me stop sharing this and I'll, uh, I'll pull up my uh, chart just because uh, I can then, uh, hang on, let me minimize this, start that. Uh, on Maya Mechanics, what I love about it so much is that you can go into the lines and read the lines. Um, and so I'm just going to pull up my Chiron if I can find it. There we go. And we're going to go into that line for a minute because I feel like it. <laughs> and because it's your unconscious son. Hang on. All right. So now we're going to go in. All right. So you can see that I see I have the 27.5 and 28.5 in my mm. Chiron. And that 27 is going to condition me because it's going to get me or not conditioning, it's going to be a force. All right, so then let's look at that line. 27.5 is such an interesting line. It's called the executor. The ability to distribute effectively the resources of others. <laughs> wow. How is this meeting you? Yeah, that's wild. So social worker, you're distributing sometimes the resources of the taxpayers, right? And things like that. Mm -hmm. Is it so then? Oh, and you have it. Did you notice you have it? Um, oh no, that's for me. I have it in the uh exalted and under your chart. I don't think you have you have it. Uh, you have it's not uh pinned to one side, but so the exalted is going to be either the gifted and principled agent of distribution, right? Not somebody that's just going to be principled, you're going to distribute very prince in a principled way, mm -hmm. uh, or the good sense and ability to find one. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like the executor or you'll find one. The power and strength to care for the resources of others. Now it's such a, and this is part of caring. Now I, I will also tell you that, you know, you always want to read places where you have the fifth line, you want to read the first line because the first okay. line is relation and the fifth line is the kind of how everybody else sees that energy, right? Mm -hmm. And the and I really want you to hear this. This is my download for you because I'm afraid you're going to burn out as a projector. The first line is that the first rule of caring for others is caring for yourself. The first line is called mm -hmm. selfishness. All right. Um, so to be selfless, you have to be selfish. To give other, it's the cliche with the oxygen in the airplane. Mm -hmm. really, and Karen Carey Parker has a really beautiful take on that. She says, don't give from your cup give from what overflows from the cup to the saucer, right? So, you know, you want to have a fountain ongoing and what you give others needs to come from the surplus, not from, because if you give from your cup, 
right? And I'm doing this because it's the throat where you feel it. Mm. No more to give, right? So look at the detriment here, a restrictive nature that hampers distribution of or the seeking of advice and assistance, weakness and the risk of loss of power restricting care, like the uh, mm. risk of loss of power restricts caring. So it's in between these two, now, you know, in yours, all right, and then the 28, I, I don't even, you know, I'm going to stop sharing because I'm going to go back to your chart because I know the 28 so by heart <laughs> because I have that line. So I'll explain you what the 28 is. Uh, the 28, uh, are we seeing um, your chart? I'm seeing it. Are yes. Seeing it on Good. All right. The 28 in line five is fantastic. It's called treacherous or treachery. But what it really means is, and this is Ra's little story about it. Let's say you go, me or you, we go to yoga. Great yoga teacher, loves the yoga. It's helping us everything. Then somebody else comes along and tells us there's a new yoga teacher in town. We're going to go check that shit out. Mm -hmm. Even if with the yoga teacher, we're going to check it out. And if it's good, goodbye, moving on. So the 28.5 is kind of a place where you can break a relationship, even if it's kind of working, because you found better allies. It's a place where you find your allies. And it's weird, right? Because it's an individual place, but it's a place where the individual will align with the best, not just good forces. What you're leaving behind might be good enough, but it's no, 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 mm, more, better, better fight, better, better yoga, better thing to do. Uh, I will leave, in my case, like I left one career. It was the individual agitating power inside me that said, no, 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 not this, something else, not this, something else. Does that resonate for you? Because you might be yeah. unconscious of all of this. Yeah, I think I am unconscious. If I'm being honest, I feel very like, I see those things happen, but I don't understand. There's like a lot of lack of understanding, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense, especially since you just had your Saturn, right? So remember that it's only around the half point of your life, around Uranus opposition, when the nodes shift, that you're going to become the fullest awareness of what you have in your unconscious side. And it's awareness heightened by acceptance. So my little mantra for this three words that I have over every workspace that I've ever had, radical self-acceptance. Because mm. we know these things, but we fight with these things. We know it, but we fight with it. So mm -hmm. that's true. when you look at your, everything that's in the red, you want to be like, am I fighting this? And now it's so interesting because you have your channel, both <laughs> conscious and unconscious because it's in your nodes both sides and then you have the 43 in the moon you have the 23 like it's you're so here to be that you know that one channel uh it's it's insane but then you know what what it means is that everybody else that's going to come and let me see are you you have a lot of rightness three parts right in your variables are you familiar with the variables at all that's yeah so the reason I looked at that real quick was, and again, I'm getting downloads that are a combination of me knowing this logically and me kind of aligning with what I need to tell you. The rightness, I have that same kind of configuration. Brings people to you. So you're just as smart as the smartest person you're talking to. If you're talking to everybody will think you're an idiot. If you're talking to smart people, so be very careful who you let come and drink from your well, if that makes sense. You have that uh, beautiful structuring gift of, you know, th this is like the channel that, you know, it's kind of funny that you mostly highlight the, like the white dudes that have it, Albert Einstein, Steve Jobs, okay, I want to say Frida Kahlo, I think, like there's a, a bunch of ladies, that, right, um, a lot of inventors, a lot of all sorts of, of innovators, so you, you have that beautiful way to structure and that's your absolute gift. But also remember, there are no motors here. What does that tell us? In order for you to make this into anything in the world and as a projector, it just is, uh, it's gonna work with that, is in relationships with others. Other people will bring the juice. Now, sometimes it's gonna be the planet. So let's look, for example, at your, uh, uh, even your annual, I'm sure, 
has the 51. So right now the 51 and the 25 is defined. So there is that ego motor that is, but it's not yours, right? It's not correct for you to make a promise with this energy now defined. But if you are correct, how is that gonna work? You're a projector, you're a three five. If you're correct, you're walking down the road, bumping into people and things, and you're gonna get the right invitation. Mm. And talk through deciding if it's the right invitation. And when it feels clear that it's the right invitation and you'll go into that right invitation, the people inviting you in the environment, they're inviting you into, they'll hook you up, they'll hook you whatever, they'll hook your sacral, maybe a two would come along and hook that 14, maybe a 50 would come along. I'm sure, by the way, I'm sure a lot of 50s are super, super attractive, like fly on shit to you mm -hmm. because... 27 sitting here in the right so you know the 50s are going to come uh a 30 is going to come and hook up your 41 like all the hooks uh, or it's going to be a collaborative even thing right but but you're going to be invited because you're, you'd be so attractive if you don't try to be anything else that you're not if you're not trying to prove your worth by making a decision from the open ego right don't make decisions to so you see what i'm doing before i'm going to the cycle i have to to, to talk the chart we have to mm -hmm. Self and not self. Gifts, what you have defined. Lessons, what you have opened. But the places that you have opened or undefined are places that you can get a lot of growth throughout the lifetime and become wise about, all right? So you're here to learn that your worthiness is not in anybody else's hands and therefore, begin with, you have nothing to prove. If you just exist as you, nothing to prove, no promises to make. Don't make promises. You're, we're not good at following through with promises if our ego is not defined. Um, you know, practice saying, I'll do my best. If you feel that you want to do something in the future, say, I feel like I want to do it. I will do my best. Don't say, I make a promise. You know what I mean? That's different. That's, a mm -hmm. different That's just ego. Then, you know, don't make decisions from a place of chasing after direction and love. That's the G. Uh, don't work until you don't know when enough is enough. Sacro, right? Don't hold on to, ask yourself if you're holding on to uh, relationships, substances, people that are not healthy, that are toxic with the undefined spleen, right? Like you you tend to hold on with this. You, you might tend to hold on to relationships and, and, and people that are not good for you. Running around like a crazy person with an open route, trying to finish, get rid of assignments because you think you would be free. No, you're here to be very relaxed. You don't have root definition. You're not supposed to move from adrenaline, right? This is just the basic 101 human design. Let's look at your centers. Uh, you are prone to avoiding confrontation and truth with an undefined solar plex. Uh, that could look like not breaking up with a person that you don't like anymore because you're afraid of your emotional drama um you know don't do that shit right it's like scratching your right ear with your left hand like you know oh you know eh, just trying to avoid everybody's emotional waves because it feels uncomfortable in your body uh does any of that does it resonate does it not resonate these open centers because i see you're kind of like hmm yeah no it does i think i have a lot of, like a i when it comes to relationships, I think there it's a lot of me looking at like I'm always checking if that makes sense. Like, does this make sense? Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Is this right? There's like a sense of checking that I do. Um, and then there's a whole other part. There's like a strong sense of values that I carry around relationships that are kind of almost like an overarching um like north star for me like my values are what drive my decisions if that makes sense well, um, I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna go look at your venus immediately that's gonna make all the sense right because this is where we have our aha uh -huh. so you have 47 here in line two and the 20 in the now interesting so like i would read those lines about the those values because venus is where we have like our values around relationships and love so again okay. and 20 is in the moment wrote now remember that although you don't have the 50 uh, anything that makes a channel with the 20 because you have throat definition all the gates hanging from your throat are activated 
what comes out of your throat as your voice has that in the now 20, has that logical leadership in the 31, has that 35 with its um, you know, desire to pro make progress. It's you of course the most dominant is that 43, 23, but it's not the only thing. Like when you have a defined center, center, the hanging gates in that center are participating in the energy coming out of that center, all of them. So explore that, right? Same with your Ajna, your logical, your abstract. And then even because you have those gates hanging across from the Ajna, that 61 and 63, you know, not the same, but they're like, they're. I, I bet, again, 24s and 4s are attracted to, to this configuration. All right, so I'm giving a lot of like one-on-ones here. Um, so yeah, with the... I keep telling clients and everything, like this is why I also take three hours at least to do a, a chart reading because it's moronic to tell people about their chart. It's more an interaction about your chart. I'm learning from you what living with that is. I know the, the knowledge, but a chart is like, it's not the world, it's a map of the world, right? It's not the car, it's the blueprint of the car. Uh, and somebody actually asked me, this fantastic question. I don't remember on which one of my groups, uh, but I'll answer it now. They said, what about people that are born the same exact time? I know um, two projector twins and they were born in a C-section. So they have the exact same birth time. They are raised by the same parents, and, but they're different. And the way this works is two people leave the factory with a car, same time stamp on the, right? The car just coming out of the assembly line. One person drives it in one neighborhood. Like maybe they're like me where I never wash my car and I have kids, so everything is sticky. Maybe the other person keeps it really clean. So just because you have the same car doesn't mean, you know, even with twins that have the same parents, maybe they, and, and by the way, twins that have the same parents might be born a couple of minutes apart and then their uh, nutrition can be different, like other things, right? But, but, but even if it's identical, identical for the hypothesis, right? You're, you know, maybe mom held twin A and dad held twin B. Boom. Immediately to begin with, the conditioning you got from, like, you weren't occupying the same space. Like, maybe if you were uh, somehow twins, but also you got to be in the exact same space in time all the time, but not, that never happens. So our chart is not us. We are us. And our chart tells us some of the blueprint. Does that make sense? I see it makes sense. Great. Yes. Yeah. Let's look quickly at your uh, Saturn. Uh, and I'm happy that, you know, I see at least did post, uh, and at least I don't know how you're doing on time, but you know, it's, it's, oh, wait, are, are we seeing your Saturn uh, return run? It's on the right. It's on the, if you see on the right, you see both. I've seen it. So are you better? Yeah. Oh, no, I know. I, I know. Yeah. I don't okay. aware of it. Are you seeing the right? Um, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure if we were seeing the right one. All right. So again, look, life cycle returns. Analysis takes a long time because you have to fully analyze the birth chart and then see where those weather patterns for a longer, a longer cycle, how they correspond to that. So, but gosh, looking at your Saturn right away, what jumps at us? Everything is defined. Everything. So we already know you are in for a ride, but that ride could be people, a beautiful education about all of these things, right? Or it could be fucking horrible, mm -hmm. right? Only thing to make it not fucking horrible is being you, following your inner authority according to your strategy. What does that mean? You know, uh, you're waiting for an invitation as a projector, knowing that invitations, by the way, I'm raising a, a genius um, emotional projector and she really hates this invitation language. And finally she told me, you know what? She's 15. I think you guys should go with recognition. Like she's totally with design, which is helpful. It's great, right? We have a push and pull. But she said, I do recognize that the part of this that works for me is, yeah, that when somebody actually recognizes me, and then it's a really good relationship for me. And that was so, and she has a completely open spleen, right? So this is beautiful. She's like, I know it's healthy for me when somebody invites me or just initiates something with me 
out of actually recognizing who I am. Now, she's also a second line, so she needs these people to knock on her door and say, hey, I think you're this or that, right? So, but anyways, waiting for an invitation is not a passive thing for a projector. It's not like, oh my God, I'm a victim of having to sit here and wait. No, the right invitations would come to you when you rack on, <laughs> be you, structure, do the thing. That attracts recognition, and recognition attracts invitations. Now, you don't have to wait for an invitation to go fucking have lunch with somebody. Invitations are for the big things in life. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So now looking at this wowsy. So a couple of things. When we look at the cycle, most important, what we want to look at is the cross, cross gates, especially if they create a definition. So you have the 36. And so is that... 35 yours I would want to go back and, and sort of between do you remember if you have the yeah. 35 All right. it's my understanding that the blue like the turquoise lines is my chart and gotcha. then oh, the yellow yeah, yeah. are my Saturn that makes sense yeah I, I, I'm just all day I'm looking at charts and every freaking person you know every freaking chart is different than the colors exactly. all right so then yeah so now you can see for example having that 30 so first of all okay a couple of things you are a two, four profile. Well, you're not this during your Saturn, but the influence of the Saturn is going to make you a little bit more like a two, four. You're going to be, uh, instead of a three, five, a two, four, very different. So during that time, what does that tell you? That you're going to tend to be more, a little bit more of a hermit mm -hmm. one in your space. Uh, and then people would come from your network of friends, that's the four, and knock on your door and say, hey, I think you would be great for this, that, or the other. Now, this is actually pretty fantastic for um, Jector. I'll tell you why. Because that two, four thing is a invitation generator. <laughs> because when you think as a two, four, your natural gifts are being recognized constantly by people and they come and invite you. The problem, or not problem, the way it's kind of built, is that the two, four, usually their first response is, go away, <laughs> go away, I don't want it. <laughs> so you, this two, four story overlaid over your three, five story, all right? And then what kind of story is it? It's a 36, six, so it's a little bit of crisis and conflict drama and it's all emotional drama and you're getting that full channel now again it's not yours you're never going to be emotional that's not the thing it's a weather imprint for that so the way this is going to come out for you is that maybe when normally you avoid confrontation and truth once that saturn hit you might find yourself flying the face to confront people with truth Damn. Mm. And sometimes it's like completely unhinged. Like you would say the wrong truth to the wrong person at the wrong time. Like don't come out and tell your boss all the confrontational truths that you have for them. Um, wait for your strategy and authority before you do that. Because I, I've had a friend that had that, that exact thing happen uh, in a cycle. And suddenly she came out and told, and, and she's such a, really not, she so avoids confrontation, right? But suddenly she was like telling your boss, well, maybe for your standards, but I live in a world where I be better. <laughs> no, she, she, that job didn't last for her after that. So, you know, um, pay attention to that dynamic. So whatever you get defined during that cycle, you get confused to think, you know, that's you. So the way, so let's look, for example, at your spleen. You might actually live a, a stop relationships that are good for you because you will have a full sense of security so with the spleen defined by the cycle you might you know you might think that it's like oh i'm gonna get even more fucked up about toxic relationships and not letting go of them it's like the opposite you will let go of good relationships and take people right so that's the kind of that with the ego you will make all these promises don't don't you, know, you will not know when enough is enough or with the sacral you might actually quit things that you're not supposed to quit etc okay. you want to kind of really look now again as i said especially if it brings a definition so let's look at your uh the 12 thank god doesn't give you a double uh what gives you that double you are getting two waves 
but they're both abstract collective waves. You get the 40, your 41 is gonna be met with the 39. Where is that 39? Let's look real quick. Uh, be here somewhere. Oh no, it's the 55, sorry. 55, 30, 30, I'm looking for the 30. Sorry, I got confused. Where is the 30 in here? Oh, the right. moon. So you're getting the 30 in line six in the detriment. Go read that line. Because, and this is the moon. So, and we don't look as much um, in, in longer life cycles, unlike the solar return, we don't look at, okay, this is gonna be people, this is gonna be, you know, we don't really look at all of this crap because mostly this is a very long cycle. We mostly look at the cross and the nodes. You know, you're gonna be walking down this road and I'm not gonna do the full thing. So, but, but having said that, if something brings a definition, you definitely wanna look at, and the way it's gonna kind of work, the moon drives us, right? So it's gonna be relationships with people. It's gonna be various people over the 14 years you're gonna be between this and your end supposition, right? For 12, 14 years. Um, that you're going to be driven by this, the feelings of the 30 to your fantasy in the 41. That, so just long story short, you want to learn about all these channels, all these energies to understand the kind of pressures that would be pressuring you one way or the other. And then what happens is if you are correct, none of this becomes a problem. Some of this is for you and some of this is not for you. Some of this would be important, like maybe that 30 to the 41 is super important for your process, but the 35, 36 is not. Uh, we don't know. Again, the only person that can learn and find out is going to be you. By doing you, which is going back to this, three, five, right? All of that stuff. And we didn't talk about the 31, 31, but see, see, I got it. Even without noticing that you have the 41 in the cross, I could tell that that 41 was going to be important. I'm getting downloads. And it's <laughs> not important because it's connecting your cross cross with your cycle cross. Right? So 31, mm -hmm. uh, or not the cycle cross, but like from, from your cross cross, you're getting something from the cycle moon. That's what I get. All right. So then anything that creates a definition between your original cross. So let's look 30. One, not getting definition. 28, not getting definition. Only 41 is getting a definition, right? So that's going to be important. Now, I can tell you some stuff about that. I have this situation with my husband. He brings the 41. I bring the 30. This is juicy and fantastic for a couple because his fantasy, it's like 41 is like a very focused fantasy, is looking for the emotion I can bring, the, the deepest kind of outrageous 30 wave of emotion so that fantasy is searching for that emotion and we've been searching and finding it every night since 1998 no not every <laughs> night but very kind of sexy place to have so this is the beauty with cycles i can foretell a, a tall dark stranger you know what i mean uh, my time now that does not mean it's going to be the right one all right, you, it needs to be the right invitation. It goes back to time. It goes back. Now, we could never exhaust this. Uh, honestly, even when I do a five hour uh, return cycle analysis, we don't exhaust everything. Um, but I hope I gave you a sense of the other thing is going to be very important to look at is um, those nodes. I do want to actually look at, oh, but uh, I think Lindsay is no longer here, I think. So uh, I don't know if she wanted us to look at her. Uh, charge when she's not here. Okay, so in that case, I do want to just highlight one last thing about your return because that's the the most important thing is to look at your cross gates, your profile. So two four, learn about the two four, get to understand this. You are going to still be a three five, but there's going to be a two four element overlaid on that. So you want to understand mm -hmm. that, and then you want to look at the nodes. You want to look at the gates, and you want to look at the lines. All right, so you are going to be walking down the road of the 30 to 42 nodal polarity on that unconscious side, right? In line three, what does that tell you? The 42 is this energy to finish long cycles and start new ones. Like the 53 is where you start, but honestly the 42 is finishing and creating a wealth of new beginnings. It's all together, right? So it's going mm -hmm. to be 
The 32 is this uh, conservative CEO kind of, it's part of a, a tribal energy of um, succeeding in bigger organizations. So what does that tell us is a nodal polarity? Really to distill it, it's gonna be an environment that's kind of all about fear of um, change. In the 32, it's gonna be fear of change. And in the 42, it's gonna be fear about finishing things or not finishing things. And, it, and again, all, it's not gonna be you, it's going to be the road you walk down. As you walk down, everything around is gonna be obsessed with it, thinking about it, right? And you're in the line three here. So you're going to be bumping, it's gonna be a lot of trial and error. You're gonna be walking down that road, bumping into things, bumping, that's gonna feel familiar because of your original carros, <laughs> okay? But it's still gonna be bumpy on the material plane, but it's the correct path for you to take. So basically, if this does not happen in the environment, you're in the wrong environment. Mm -hmm. Conscious side, 51, 57. So we've all been experiencing that for a long while now, right? Because 51 and 57, so you just had this. So this is when, from a couple of months ago, when it, or now actually, when it was in the first line, yeah? Um, your Saturn, the date, mm. right? So what does that tell us? An environment of fear of the future and crazy shocks. This is the world as we live in right now, right? You know, I'm, I'm originally from Israel. Since October 7th, I've been nothing but horrified, disgusted, disgusted but, but, but by what is done to my people and what my people are doing in return, right? Like all of this, I'm, I'm equally horrified by all of this horrific shit, right? So, and this is my environment for my year and for my Chiron. So like, oh, okay, I guess I'm in the correct environment. Doesn't feel great, but it's, all right. I recommend watch the uh, Eclipse. Um, if you didn't, my Eclipse video on YouTube for the Eclipse, because that Eclipse was all in the 51.1, 57.1, the nodes were in that, and, and in line five and the sun and the earth and the moon, because they're all aligned, they were all aligned on that axis. So I took a deep, deep dive into this energy and I really recommend that you watch it because it's gonna give you what that looks like. But basically, and then you're in line one. So you will be diving into deep investigations and everybody in the environment, it would be a studious, investigative, but also very fearful environment. Why? Because line one, wants the foundation and researches, right? It's the investigator, but it's investigating because it's insecure that it ever gets the foundation. Right? So one uh, line one people are so well prepared because they have an imposter syndrome. They always think they need to study more. So that's going to be affecting your movement in your environment. Um, again, that's not you. That's the road you're walking down. So if the way cycles work, if you're walking down the correct road and you are respecting the movement, like the two, four elements of that, then you will get to see what all the rest of it is here to teach you, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can see what the outer planets are here to show you, okay, what the people that come into your process are here to show you. So that's kind of like the overarching how we do life cycle analysis. And again, I invite everybody to join remotely. The, and, and you don't have to if you don't want to, but there is an opportunity. We have the five hour, six hour uh, workshop where I explain all of this and then we play with this and then we're going to have a meeting and, and do it. So feel free. And it's all for, I think the early bird special is back. So it's like 2.59. Um, so mm -hmm. If you guys want to explore, I'll put that uh, later. I'll put the links when Facebook allows me to put links again anywhere. Jesus, Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, it's beautiful. And then, yeah, look at all the stuff like, you know, everything that you get at the Phoenician is going to be interesting. It's going to be an education. So a couple more things since I have you guys and there's no more questions and I'm about to finish. It's important to notice if there is a full channel and it's kind of interesting. I don't see this is where you have a lot of hooks. None of these are channels that you don't have half of. Like everything, with everything that you're hit with, it's all hooking an existing hook. This is why, yeah. I, because if it was, let's say if you had uh, 48, 16, and you don't have the 16 and you don't have the 48, then that's just gonna be an education. You have nothing personal 
involved. You're just like, oh, I'm learning about logical talent, right? That, but when what the cycle brings is in a, what we call electromagnetic, have you ever heard about that in human design? Like when yeah. somebody, yeah. that's going to feel personal. That's mm -hmm. like, hoo -hoo -hoo. it's coming into my hook. So it's going to be, it's going to feel personal. It's going to give you a personal education. And then if it's coming from outer planets, it's, it's, it's called development. So it's going to be personal development. If it's coming from inner planets, it's going to be the, uh, um, personal, something personal brought to you by a relationship with people. All right. So that 24 is going to be personal through people. That 41, where did we say mm -hmm. it was? Uh, right at 30 uh, we found it in the moon personal shit with people I'm telling you you're gonna you're gonna marry a 36 <laughs> or not marry but have a lot of fun with like I married I am married and I'm wondering what his ah go see go look if that... see. he's uh, a man an emotional manifester too by the way <laughs> well how interesting well I'm looking to see if there are other I mean there are other tantric channels that can write you have uh, so the green is yours. Let me see. You have the 14. So if he has to, like, there's a lot of other, there are many, many, many ways to connect, like the 659, but you don't have any of these, uh, but you have the six during the cycle, but that's not how that works. Like you have 37. So if somebody comes with a 40, very attractive. Right? There are a lot of places where we have kind of sexual things going on. Uh, 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 let's see what else. Uh yeah, those are the main kind. But honestly, it's like I'm having you. So check to see if he has the thirty. Now it doesn't mean that he doesn't have the thirty. That's it. It's doomed. It's not. No. Find what are the places you know your glues. Sun and electromagnetics are difficult. Like if somebody has the five, which is very fixed time patterns and just like knowing time, and somebody else has the fifteen across from it, which is extreme readings. That could be, my husband has the five and he's like, he's the kind of person he puts pasta on, he can go, like he puts the water to boil, he'll be there when they boil. He just knows time. He doesn't need to put up an alarm. My son has the 15. He can take an hour and a half to tie his shoelaces. So these two together, that's an electromagnetic that creates a lot of friction. It's like, ah, okay. So then some electromagnetics are very happy, sexy, fun. Some are intellectually curious like 43 and 23s are like oh tell me more i will articulate tell me your inside i will articulate like, like some are really nice uh, some are very sexy like a 59 and 6 haba haba make children all right but some are like mm, and this is difficult a difficult like the 50 and the 27 i think sometimes the 50 is the rules and the 27 kill them let me care for you oh i'll tell you what the rules for caring are no just carry no just rules okay just an example all right, so now I really have to finish because in an hour, I actually have the Manifestor Women's Group first live call. So I'm a busy, busy manifester these days. Um, but Allison, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about life cycles, which is something I'm clearly obsessed about, um, and for joining uh, this for the first time. So welcome, welcome. And definitely, um, you know, if you, I know this is going to percolate and you'll have more questions. So feel free to share them on the group. Uh, or DM me, hit me, you know, if you want to uh, schedule something. And by the way, and I'm telling this to Alison, but also to everybody else who might be listening to this later, I don't want anybody who wants, who feels called to uh, work with me uh, to not be able to do this just because of uh, they, they can afford my prices. So if you feel called to get a chart reading for me um, or join one of my workshops or whatever it is, and you can't afford it, but you no, I can kind of tell, like, if you really can't afford it, right, let me know. And I, we can work on something. We can, we can be like, how much do you spend on coffee a month? All right, pay this three months, like, give me $50 a month, and then we'll do it, right? So we, we can figure that. Or, you know, now, right now, I'm doing a lot of new things. I might need some administrators for, like, we can barter, whatever. Let's see. But don't kind of hold back just because of the, you know, I don't want my prices, I want my prices to uh, honor my worth and the worth of what I'm giving, but not be prohibited. So I always say that, you know, like, let me know if you feel called to do any work. But also, I'm so, so, so happy to have those spaces completely free. I have a 55 in line three. It's all about abundance. Abundance is all about a state of mind. And when I'm in an abundant state of mind, resources come to me. I don't, I don't have to worry about it. So, 
while I, you know, while this is a business, it's also just in my nature to hold and create supportive communities. 1995, that's my son, uh, my conscious son. So that's that's my genius, right? That's what I'm here to do. Like know everybody's needs and step up with practical solutions for their needs. Uh, and take care of their needs. And I, now I have the 27 in line five. So Allison can tell you, I'm supposed to execute, but Allison herself is still working to figure out what the 27 in five is. Let's have a, let's continue conversing about that because I'm in the same exact place as you, Allison. I need to figure out what that, like I, I, I started figuring out, it's like, yeah, I have teenagers. Teenagers mm -hmm. are hard to care for. <laughs> I love them, they're mine, but it's not the easiest. So it's like, all right, now I am the executor of caring here. Like, how do we do these things? And so I work. Oh, I ahead. work primarily with teenagers. I work at a school, and so um, that's my main is. Teenagers. Like you teach me how, to <laughs> teach, but mostly how I deal with them is like I want you to be toddlers again. No, I'm kidding, but you know, it's yeah. yeah. So for me, that 27, it's come. It's I have the 50, right? I don't have Sacral. There is suddenly this uh, extra oomph on my role as somebody that has to, to, to care. And, you know, manifestors, moms, we were just having this conversation about them on the manifestor group, how women group, how we have this relationship with motherhood. It's it's not necessarily an easy, like we have a stereotype of generator as the, as the, as the energy of mommy's love. And that's exactly that 27. Uh, 27 is kind of like milk and cookie and bedtime stories. I don't know. And we don't have that. We don't have that um, enveloping sacral. But I'm going to tell you, and my kids would tell you, that manifestors mom rock. So it's not like, okay, we're doomed to not. It's just love your mom the way your mom is, right? And love right. how you are a mom the way you are if you ended up being one. Um, even if you ended up entering into motherhood incorrectly, according to human design, what to do no choice right so you, you have these kids just don't think you're a broken mother if you're not a stereotypical whatever stereotype you have about mother all right i just ventured into a whole new thing that can take us three hours but all right i'll i'll try to know when enough is enough thank you everybody for joining us and all the i know many many people who will watch this later and allison thank you for sharing with us uh you know so gracefully and openly about your your journey um, and I appreciate this new conversation. I feel like it's going to continue and you're welcome to continue to ask me questions about any of this and all of you listening, watching, come on the group, post your charts, ask your questions, come to the open calls. This is, this is going to continue. I'm, I'm feeling clarity <laughs> around doing this in this time of my Chiron and in this year of 2024, where we're starting to really, really feel that shift. Um, whatever that means to you. All right, have a great rest of your day. And if you're a master woman, feel free to jump on the next call that's starting in an hour. Uh, <laughs> I'll go eat something. Bye. -bye. <laughs> yeah, go eat food and get rest. First. Yes, thank you, Projector. <laughs> thank you for caring, 25 Projector. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Bye.